this is Spencer from the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Jennifer Nelson got that right, and Alessandro Carloni, Correct. Um, the co-directors of Kung Fu Panda 3. Um, the first place I want to start <laughs> with is how challenging is it coming into a project like this? I mean, obviously Kung Fu Panda is everywhere. It's a massive brand. Uh, I mean, the films are becoming, you know, temple vehicles. How difficult is it to come into this? I mean, I know, Jennifer, you worked on part two, but... We just all did. We all oh, did you work on yes. Okay. We, we um, it's hard. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be, like, a lot of pressure, expectations, whatnot. Yeah. How do you sort of come into that and sort of um, a, get a new idea to continue on, I guess? There is a lot of pressure, and uh, me and Ali have both been involved in Panda from the very beginning. And Ali was in the story department, animated on the first film, and I was the head of story. So we were there creating Poe from scratch at that time. <laughs> and because of that, he is family to us. He is somebody that we know so well. And our job is to protect him over the course of all these years. So, yes, it's a lot of pressure, but it's actually a lot of internally based pressure because our crew is very tight. We have the same bunch of people in the core group that went through all three films. And we have a massive amount of pressure on ourselves to make sure that the films are true to the characters that we helped create. So that's a yeah. lot of pressure. And I think more than most franchises I know, at least, this is a truly character-driven franchise mm -hmm. is all about Poe at the end of the day, not decided about the world or the battles, but truly about him. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pressure does become twofold for me. It becomes one, making sure that the fans are happy with what we make Poe do and what, how we portray him, because it truly comes down to how much they love him. And secondly, the other pressure comes from not necessarily coming up with a story, but a story worthy of him. Mm -hmm. And a story that, in a way, that actually how we come up with ideas. We think about what we want to see Poe do. Who would we want Poe to meet? What would, what obstacle would Poe have to face versus what story, what idea, what plot? It all comes up to him, to the character of Poe. And also, this was our chance to do all the things that we wished we could have done we hadn't done yet. That's right. <laughs> well, that, that's a great point that I was sort of wondering about, is, especially now that you're talking about how you were involved from the beginning. At that point, I mean, I guess, you know, in Hollywood, you never know what's going to be a big production. I mean, obviously, you have DreamWorks behind this. This is a big animated film. But... At that point, when you guys were first starting to work on this, did you have any sort of vision for where the franchise would go, say, if there were multiple movies? Or are you really just at this point taking it individually each time you go out? We always make one movie at a time. We're supposed to. I don't think we'd be able to, first of all, enjoy making a movie. Yeah. But also, I don't think we'd do a good job if we plan it as just one of the many installments. Yeah. It's a truly different frame of mind that, that if you have to create a story that can stand alone versus I uh, just make one version and we'll see yeah. another one and another one. It's truly really a different approach. You to have to be able to enjoy the film by itself. You have to have a sense of finality, a sense of like conclusion, yeah. to, to feel like you've gone to a journey to have an end. But at the same time, we overbuild our world so much because it's very real to us. The world, the characters, everything so much bigger. We can't fit it all into a movie. So there's always more material to go over, but we have to focus on each movie one at a time. It's four years of emotional investment for us. So if we don't feel like we're getting something by the end of that, we're not happy. <laughs> it's also for the fans. I, I'd much rather tell them, this is it. This is your chance to see what happens to Pope. And if they love it, I'm sure the question will come, should we see more of it? But that, that comes, second, comes secondary. But that's, a, that's an interesting thing. And now that you're talking about this, I'm sitting there thinking about um, franchising in Hollywood because in act, live action movies, the trilogy is so in vogue now. Like, you know, you think about Star Wars, The Hunger, like all these films that have like a very set sort of um, yes. series of films that they're going to hire. I mean, obviously Star Wars will continue after seven, eight, and nine, yes. but they have this hierarchy for these three films. And I'm trying to think of animated films. I mean, I guess the investment and the complexity in making all that is so much more complicated that you can't necessarily maybe do that. But... Uh, it's interesting that that hasn't sort of made its way to animated films because it it's... It a little bit on How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, oh, right, yeah, which is a great point as well. Yeah. I mean, Dean, the, 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 boy, the, the writer and director of the second movie and now the third, he planned the, the second and third as a story that exists with two movies. Uh, but for Pan Which no. I'm on board with totally because I love How to Train Your Dragon and I got to interview uh, Bonnie Arnold about it as well. And uh, I'm totally on board with <laughs> as much of that as well. But uh, it's, 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 it seems like it could, I don't know, it, it, as storytellers, is that something that you would 
prefer if you could big, build a bigger story out and sort of, no. instead of necessarily having to encapsulate everything into one film, maybe? I think that might work if you're making them at the same time. Mm. If you're not, and you're looking at eight years, <laughs> it's not it's a, gonna, long time. it's a long time to hold out. You kind of have to make sure you get some jollies in the course of making the film. And so... I think some of those films we're talking about were all made at the same time. Some of the live-action films, they filmed them back-to-back sure. back or all at one time and then cut it all later into multiple films. Or at least the, the, the outlines were ready. Yeah. Mm-hmm. While we, you know, again, Dean planned the outline of the third with the second, but we've consciously made sure that this is the movie that stands alone. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of, I mean, you talked about the internal pressure. How challenging is it to sort of work within the... I don't know if it's the studio expectations or the the fan expectations or whatever, because the more you do this franchise, the more that you have to think about things like merchandising and you have to think about all these different elements. How much is it challenging to keep that sort of creative control in the direction you want versus being able to like you be like, okay, we need to have like a Poe Christmas sort of thing or over the wall. They actually do a very good job of separating things for us because it's hard enough making a good movie without worrying about whether that object in the background is going to make a great toy. <laughs> so we try to make a great movie. And we never get told things like, well, could you change this entire storyline to make a better toy? No, we try to make sure that it works for the movie. And ultimately, what works great for the movie usually works great for a toy. And we aren't involved in what toys are made. Actually, what we're lucky is in our case was that as you make an animated movies for many years, you have nothing to show. So you have to pitch and show some rough drawings. <coughs> and we do get to show that to the marketing people, the distribution people, also the toy people. And uh, we show them the story, show them the story, and then they, they hope to find something that, oh, we can use this angle, use that angle while we make the movie. And in this movie, as we pitched them the story, they saw Panda Babies. Oh my gosh, that's going to be so cute, perfect, let's use that angle. So they go off doing their job, which is to sell the movie and show what we can do with it while we just go on making our movie. Yeah. And in our case, we were lucky enough that as we involved them in the making of it, they got excited because we have ideas and something that is perfect yeah. for their side of the job as well. How much of the third film had you guys thought about at the conclusion of the second one? I mean, there's obviously a thread at the very end of the second one, which carries over into this one, which is, you know, the panda world, because it, it, the first two films is believed that they're all dead. Well, um, was yeah. that something that you felt impetus that you had to address in the third movie, or was it just something that naturally you're like, okay, this feels like a good time to... During the second film, the reason why we put that coda at the end was to make sure people didn't know, didn't think that pandas were all dead. Okay. I mean, we were actually on the plane in China doing a, a sort of research trip, and we're, we saw how much the pandas meant to the people in China and all the tourists going to the zoos yeah. and looking at all the babies. And so we can't just make people think they're all gone. We can't do that. So we put that on as a coda to reassure. It wasn't intended as being like the impetus for a whole new movie. But when it came time to think of where would the characters go, what would you want to see answered in this film, where is Poe leading us? The only thing that we were looking at is, well, that's obviously we, he's got to meet his father. Mm. Come on. And then what does that mean for him? What does that mean for Mr. Ping? What does that mean for Poe's journey? The character led us to what the story was going to be. It's interesting with animated films um, that you can essentially do whatever you want. That's one thing that, I mean, I always will love about them versus live action films is, I mean, live action films, I guess you can do everything with CGI at what point it becomes essentially animated, almost, whatever. Almost. But uh, at the end of the day, an animated film, you can literally do whatever you want. How difficult is it to sort of rein in your imagination or sort of try and get something that you're like, okay, this is um, uh, a plausible we thing. We don't have to rein it in. We should let it go as far as we want. You know, not to give anything away, but as you can see in the trailers as well, there is a, a hint of a supernatural element in our movie. Yeah, not quite very a much so. It's quite a strong yeah. presence in it. And we, did, we had to do the opposite of writing in our imagination. We had to see how far can we push it, how far can we go, both in scale and in, in madness and in, in how they represent this world of, of what we call the spirit realm. And that was truly the fun part, you know, the opposite of writing it in. It's like, that how far can we take awesome it? awesome for yeah. fight choreography. Exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, exactly. Like, it's is so it, fun. <laughs> is, is there, I mean, you guys have completed three. Have you guys at all looked forward 
to what could potentially be four at this point. You literally just like, let's get this film out there. Oh, I've spent four yeah. years on it. Yeah. I, I don't even want to think about four yet. You need to recharge. You yes. need to go home it's and possible. remember what it's like to sleep and <laughs> grocery shop. <laughs> I mean, is that like, I mean, I guess both of you have spent most of your time working in animated films, so it might be hard to compare, but what is it like when you get into these projects? I mean, as you said, four years of your time is spent working on this that like, us lay people are just going, the cinemas don't really appreciate it. Like, I just saw Kung Fu Panda 3 this year. Why, why isn't 4 out next year or something like that? What is it from your perspective after you work so hard on these projects? It is like having a kid go off to college. That's what it's like. You've worked so hard. You've baked them as much as you could. And now they're off in the world and they're, they have lives of their own. So at the end of the day, all the hard work means something because you see people enjoying themselves. You see people smile. And they become the, the audiences now. They're not ours anymore, even though they've been ours for years. <laughs> We've taken control. <laughs> yeah, the audience has them now. Yes, that's pretty much what it is. You're right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny how, um, when we all, even when we see anime, live action movies now, the, the line is getting much more blurred between live action and animation. I mean, when you watch Avatar, that's an animated movie. And, uh, and when you can have so much, when it comes down to, Everything you see is being created by an artist. That basically means that the line is, is crossed. And, and, and it's fascinating to me to see how live action movies are now much more into our realm. And so. Well, that's why I've always thought the absurdity of like, I mean, I'm not going to say they shouldn't be, have a best animated feature, but like to finally get animated features considered for best picture, I thought was something that was absurd for years. Like, I, like Wall E, I thought should have won that, no doubt. Case in point. Production design in an animated film is just as intensive as a production design in any other film. And the, the, the look of the film is so amazing, and yet they're not considered sometimes yeah. the same. Production design, if anything, is far more Harder. amount of labor. Because, you know, if you see a background in the background of a... If, sorry, if you see a tree in the background of a live-action movie, the tree was there. If you see it in an animated movie, someone designed each leaf, created each the leaf. So the tree. amount of production design Every and art direction that goes into an animated movie... Every incidental thing has to be it's a bit of, yeah, It's bizarre that the Oscars uh, hasn't quite acknowledged that yet. Someday. Uh, Jennifer, Alessandro, thank you so much. I wish you the best of luck with Kung Fu Panda 3, though I have no doubts it'll be very successful. Thank and I uh, can't wait to see what you guys do next. Thank, thank you very much. much. Can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to bite the side. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.